microinverters training. Today we're going to speak about how you connect in-phase microinverters onto a SunSig hybrid inverter as an AC coupled design. My name is Justin Flanagan. I'm the field application engineer for in-phase energy in South Africa. We first got to look at the advantages of using in-phase. So microinverters with string inverters. Microinverters don't have any single point of failure. Comes with a standard 25 year warranty period. It has rapid shutdown function, function built into the microinverters. Module level, level monitoring, meaning you can track each microinverter independently and see how they are performing. Design flexibility is very high. You can use most of the roof space. Electrical safety, safer AC on the roof. We have no high DC voltage coming from the roof down into the mic, uh, into the inverter. And modular, yes, meaning if you start off with four panels on your roof with four microinverters, you can expand as much as you can. So we're going to have a look at what equipment you need with in phase as a PV system. The first will be your microinverters, IQ7A or the IQ8 series that will be coming to South Africa soon. Um, the seventh generation of microinverters, they're double insulated, they're IP67, and they're compatible with all types of modules. The next will be the gateway. The gateway communicates to enlightened cloud, it's either got Wi-Fi or LAN connections onto the gateway. It includes two transformers for production and consumption for single phase. For the three phase system, you'll need to purchase four extra CTs and a power line communication with the microinverters known as PLC. The next is your Q relay. These devices um, will protect your microinverters from any voltages that are out of range. If it picks up any uh, voltage out of range, it will disconnect from the grid, protecting your microinverters. Uh, you have two types. The one on the left is your single phase QLA, and the one on the right is your three phase QLA. The next is your Q cable. So the Q cable is pre wired. And that's plug and play. You have two different types of Q cable, single phase or three phase. They come in different lengths, 1.3 to 2.3 meters, depending if it's portrait or horizontal on your roof. The number of connectors are determined by how many microinverters you have installed. These are some of the accessories. So this will be your field wireable connector, your ceiling cap, if any unused Q cable is used on the roof, you can seal it off with the ceiling cap to make sure it's IP67. Your Q terminator, this is used in the beginning and your end of your branch circuit. The disconnecting tool, if you need to disconnect the microinverter from the Q cable and your current transformer. So why use NFAS with SunSync? You've got a flexible design, you have greater productivity, increased safety, and more control. Communication. So we'll just have a look at how Enphase communicates. So the microinverters communicate with the gateway through PLC communication. The gateway is connected to your Wi-Fi in your building. And then the gateway will send all the information to the enlightened cloud every 15 minutes, and then you'll be able to view how your system is performing on the enlightened app. With the SunSync, the SunSync is also connected to your Wi Fi. The SunSync sends information to their cloud, and you'll be able to view your system and your battery performance on the SunSync app. So, just an introduction to the AC coupled systems. What is meant with AC coupled? AC coupled systems, IQ7 or IQ8 serial microinverters are connected to the generator input of the SunSync hybrid inverter. 
When the PV is producing, it will supply power to the central loads and excess power will be used to charge the battery and potentially export power to the grid once the battery is fully charged. The main advantage of AC coupled, once the grid fails, the battery inverter creates a microgrid, which allows the PV to continue supplying power to the central loads and charges the battery. During this state, the non-backup loads will switch off as they are only powered from the grid. This is controlled by the automatic transfer switch built into the SunSync inverter. AC frequency shift. What is AC frequency shift and when is it needed? So AC frequency shift, as described previously, SunSync hybrid inverters allow the system to work in an off-grid mode with microinverters producing power even when there is no grid available. When PV production is higher than the required power consumption, excess power is directed to the batteries. In this case, a way to control PV production is needed to manage the state of charge and avoid damage to the batteries. Frequency shifting is a method SunSync inverters use to control PV power. By changing the frequency of the AC wave, the SunSync can control the power output of the microinverters to prevent overcharging the batteries, as well as overloading the inverter charge at the input of the battery. So as the frequency increases, the power of the microinverters decrease, and the end phase grid profiles contain the ramp rate settings. Integration. So we got to just mention integration. The first, the first two SLDs will describe how you'll connect in phase if the hybrid inverter cannot uh, do frequency shift. And the, the second SLD will show you how you connect it onto the SunSync. So this is just the normal SLD uh, with a hybrid inverter that cannot frequency shift. So the end phase will still be connected on the nominal side of that inverter. So that means when there is a grid outage, end phase will switch off. But now we're gonna have a look how you connect end phase onto the SunSync hybrid inverter. So the SunSync hybrid inverter, this is just how it's normally connected. And with end phase, you'll connect it onto the generator input with all the necessary safety equipment safety circuit breakers for the end phase to be connected to. And then design principles. So system components don't change with end phase. The CT positions are the same. Only the connection point for the end phase system changes. So that will be connected onto the generator input of the SunSync hybrid inverter. And the battery requires frequency shift function to be AC, AC coupled. How do you configure the SunSync hybrid inverter for end phase? Setting up the microinverters on SunSync hybrid inverter. So after the PV circuit for end phase equipment has been connected on the generator terminals in the SunSync and all AC connections have been checked, turn the SunSync inverter on, open the settings page on the app for the SunSync, scroll down to auxiliary load, the window below will appear. So you'll see there the generator input has been selected. Now you need to select the one below it for microinverter input. Next, you'll adjust the AC couple off battery to 99%. Adjust the AC couple on battery to 95%. Adjust the frequency value to 50.5 Hertz. Select the MI0 export if you're not allowed to export back to the grid. And then with the end phase system, when you're doing the commission of the end phase, you just need to make sure you select the correct grid profile. So if you're not exporting to the grid, you must have zero export enabled. If you don't have this function or this grid profile readily available on your profile, please reach out to customer support or you can email me directly and I'll give you access to the correct grid profile.
Just a summary and checklist. So SunSync energy storage with end phase, the quick summary, the microinverters have been selected in the SunSync app. Adjustments have been made in the SunSync app, frequency shift enabled, frequency range adjusted, the zero export has been selected, and the correct grid profile selected in the Enlighten for end phase. And that concludes how you connect end phase onto the SunSync hybrid inverter.